guys and welcome to another Back to Basics video series. Today we're going to be looking at PB modules and how they work, right down to the technical aspects behind the cell and all the way up to how they're installed on site. The idea of this series is to plug any knowledge gaps in a few minutes to get you back on site but with all the knowledge that you need for your next install. So dialing it right back to basics. PV cells themselves capture solar irradiance and they convert it into electrical DC current when exposed to light. That's the kind of current that can be converted into AC by an inverter, which is what most household appliances will use. So now that we understand that process, we can look at the basics of a PV module, understanding the components of a typical PV cell and how they all fit together on site. The PV cell is essentially a crystalline silicon semiconductor wafer, and manufacturers will tinker with the chemistry of the silicon during production via a doping process, and they'll add the likes of boron or phosphorus to produce P or N type cells, with N type modules generally being the more efficient of the two. So looking at the technicals behind a module, we can see that they're made up of multiple PV cells that are contained within an aluminium frame. We've got a glass front, a plastic back sheet, and they all connect to each other and feed into an electrical junction box at the rear of the module where there's a pair of connection tails, one positive and one negative, and often for an MC4 type connector. If we look inside the module, multiple PV cells are generally connected together in several series strings. These internal cell strings are connected via bypass diodes, which will help reduce the effects of shading over parts of the module by limiting the amount it can impact the entire module. Smaller rated modules will typically consist of fewer PV cells within the module, but higher rated modules will also have higher numbers of cells. They'll typically come as either 60 or 72, although other options do exist and higher rated modules are generally bigger in size and will require more space for the install. Modules will have a rated power output in watts, which will indicate their maximum potential power output, but you've got to take into account that these are under optimal conditions and that in general use, they probably won't reach that all the time. Multiple strings set up like this can be referred to as a solar array. So now that we've got some of the fundamentals of how a module will work, we can now look at how they're applied on site and different kinds of technology and options that you might have for each install. And one of the key considerations you'll be choosing on each install is whether you go for a mono or polycrystalline panel. Modules that use monocrystalline silicon are typically slightly more efficient and characteristically have a black look to them as opposed to a bluish hue of a polycrystalline module. So we mentioned earlier that modules are surrounded by an aluminium frame and aesthetically this frame can be silver or black. And an all black module will include a mono module with a black frame and a black back sheet. And whilst these are aesthetically pleasing, an all black module can get a little warmer in the summer and slightly lose efficiency over an equivalent module with a white back sheet. And now we're going to talk about the different kinds of cells that you have available to you and each one does something slightly different but the idea being that they increase the efficiency of the module. So first up we're going to look at half cell technology which literally consists of individual cells cut in half and arranged in the module within those distinct halves and those are connected together in parallel which means not only is there more resilience to the effects of shading but the reduced cross-sectional area of the cell means lower internal resistance and therefore fewer electrical losses. It's worth noting though that a half cell module will result in a split junction box with positive and negative tails connected to their individual smaller junction boxes, split one each side of the back of the module. There's also PERC technology, which is passive emitter rear cell technology, which uses an additional collection at the back of the cell to help capture more photons that aren't necessarily captured at the front of the cell when the light first hits. And there's also bifacial technology, which allows solar cells to have an active area at both the front, but also the back. And this means that unlike traditional modules, the rear side of the bifacial module contributes to the overall energy generation of the entire module. These bifacial back sheets can be made of PVA plastic or glass, and these types of modules benefit from light reflected from roof surfaces 
or on the ground if ground mounted and up to the back of the module but bifacial technology is only viable under certain conditions but you can expect it to boost performance by up to 20 percent in really optimal conditions and some modules have optimizers built right into them resulting in a smart module these optimizers can boost the overall system's energy production and enable module level monitoring and give more resilience to shading than other options. It's also worth noting that you can mount your modules in portrait or landscape. The goal is just to maximize the usable roof space for your orientation. And for example, if there's issues with shading on certain areas of the roof, you can avoid these by changing the layout of the panel. And some mounting methods may also dictate whether the modules have to be portrait or landscape too. So if you're looking to get started, check the portal today and you can see our wide range of PV modules from that Silicon Module Super League. But you can also check the documentation page for other video guides in the Back to Basics series, but also some of the other guides that we've produced to help you get started on your journey in solar PV. Until the next video guys, thanks for your time, take care.